I wrote a book called um, They Take Our Jobs and 20 Other Myths About Immigration. We have a myth about the nature of the country, a myth that we believe that it's important to question is something that I often quote President Obama saying, but I'm sure all of you have heard it in many different contexts as well. Like this is a country that has always welcomed immigrants. We are a country that has always welcomed white immigrants. And if you look back over the history of immigration and citizenship law here, that is just so crystal clear and obvious. Only white people could be citizens of the United States until after the Civil War. That's close to 100 years where our citizenship law explicitly restricted citizenship to white people. Yes, we welcomed immigrants during those first 100 years, and we actually brought forcibly many people of color into the country during those first 100 years, but they were not part of the country, just like Native Americans were not part of the country. They were legally excluded from citizenship. So they were welcomed, but not as immigrants. They were welcomed as enslaved workers. Part of the building of the country was to fill it up with white people so that it could be a white country. And it's really not until after the Civil War, when citizenship is opened up and citizenship by birth is created so that anybody who's born in the United States is a citizen, regardless of race. Once non-white people could become citizens, then that's when the United States started worrying about immigration and racially restricting immigration. And that started almost as soon as the 14th Amendment was passed. So the Chinese are excluded. And that's also when we start seeing large scale deportations of Mexicans. That is a lot of Mexicans were also crossing the border, but most of them were young men coming to work and were easy to deport when the harvest season or the railroad job or the mining job or whatever they were doing was done, they would simply be shipped back across the border. The immigration system that was set up in the post-World War II period had three tracks, open doors for Europeans. The second track was Chinese, completely closed door on the West Coast. There's no Ellis Island on the West Coast. There's Angel Island and Angel Island was a place where people were processed and deported not allowed in like Ellis Island. And then on the southern border, this revolving door where U.S. recruiters would go to Mexico, recruit workers to come in for a specific job, and then deport them back to Mexico at the end of the job. And for almost the entire 20th century, that's how the system worked on three tracks. Open doors for Europeans, closed doors for Asians, and revolving doors for Mexicans. So when we say that the United States is a country that has always welcomed immigrants, that statement is false unless we add the word white. It's a country that has always welcomed white immigrants. Immigrant rights are human rights. Um, you know, how much taxes are paid by immigrants to me isn't really the key issue. But if we look at the statistics, in fact, any immigrants who work pay taxes. And in a lot of cases, immigrants are not eligible for the benefits they should be getting for the taxes that they're paying. So they actually contribute a lot more than they get back as opposed to citizens who are eligible for things like unemployment insurance and social security and, um, you know, are, are eligible to get back from their taxes. Of course, immigrants get back some things because there's some services that are open to everyone, you know, public transportation, public libraries, schools are, are open to everyone. But um, a lot of, of social service benefits immigrants actually um, don't have access to, and they do pay taxes if they work. The biggest specific misconception is the idea that immigrants take American jobs. You know, adding immigrants to the population has the similar but not identical effects on the economy as adding other people to the population. Like when people leave or when the population shrinks, uh, there aren't enough people to work, there aren't enough people to consume, schools close, businesses close, the economy collapses when the population declines. That's terrible for the economy. And when the population grows, there's more needs, there's more demand, there's more people to pay taxes, and there's more jobs are created. Especially in the US right now, the population overall is not shrinking, but the population of old people is growing faster than the population of young people. 
So all of these people of my generation and above are retiring. Old people create a lot of demand for needs. They're not working. They need health care. They still are eating, even though they're not uh, working. They need help doing a lot of things. So there's a lot of demand as a population ages. And if there's not enough young people coming into the economy, then there's nobody to provide the services that old people need. And not just the services, but a lot of old people live on things like pensions and social security. And if there's not enough young people working, there's no one to pay into those systems in order for old people to um, get the income that they need to survive. So to say that immigrants take American jobs is as irrational as saying that nobody should have children because those children are going to take jobs someday. No, we need people to do jobs. And the more people there are, the more need there is for people to do jobs. So it's just a really twisted argument, I think. Immigration policies haven't varied that much between red and blue, between Democrat and Republican. You know, we had eight years of President Obama. He deported more people to Latin America than any president in U.S. history. Um, so immigrant rights organizations called President Obama the deporter in chief. You know, has President Biden done anything to uh, liberalize immigration policy? If he has, I must have missed it.